The third part of your subtitle is Reforming the Fed. Now your friend Ron Paul has written, End the Fed, but you're at Reforming the Fed, and here's what you write. We may be in awe of the Fed's high priests, but they can no more guess the need for money than the central planners could run an economy in the days of the Soviet Union. Absolutely. This idea that a handful of people at the Fed can determine what interest rates are, uh, how banks should be run, uh, what the money supply should be, is preposterous. The Soviet Union fell, and we point out in the book what the Fed has done since, uh, first of all, weakening the dollar, which started under a Republican administration. Uh, this is bipartisan nonsense here. Uh, in, the, in the early part of the last decade, started weakening the dollar. That's why commodity prices went up. That's why housing prices went up and uh, led to the disaster of 2008. Uh, since 2008, the Fed has still misbehaved. Take, for example, this whole thing on zero interest rates. Should they raise interest rates? Controlling interest rates is like price controls. They're deforming the market. The Fed should be out of it. They can set the rate they'll lend money to banks at, you know, their so-called discount window, as they've always done. That's legitimate. But in terms of trying to set the price of uh, borrowing and lending for the rest of the economy, it's like the Soviet Union. It has distorted the market. For example, uh, bonds, they've, 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 they, I don't know whether they know they did this, but they've created a credit market today where the favoritism goes to bonds, corporate bonds, government bonds. Now, who can issue bonds? Usually big companies and obviously governments. What has happened, if you look at the credit, where, where credit is gone since 2008, since the Fed started this nonsense, to small businesses, new businesses, households, tiny, killing the creation of new businesses, killing the expansion of small businesses, which is a key reason why, in addition to overregulation, why for the first time in memory, uh, small businesses aren't being created in the numbers we've traditionally had. Since 2009, the number of creation of small businesses is a fraction of what they were after previous recessions. And we know small businesses, new businesses, are where the innovation comes from and where job creation comes from. Not from the biggies, but from the new ones. That hopefully tomorrow's biggies. And it's not happening. You have periods where businesses are uh, going, companies are going out of business at a faster rate than new companies are being created. That is brand new. Goes against what uh, one of the great strengths of this country, the ability to always come up with new and uh, greater companies. Uh, back in the 70s, whoever heard of Microsoft, whoever heard of FedEx, whoever heard of Apple and other companies, Amgen, they all started as little companies in the 70s, became the biggies of the 90s and today. We're not getting that kind of creation. And that's the slow kind of rot that I think people sense but can't put their fingers on.